If you're checking us out on Facebook, we ask you to do me a favor and press that uh, share button. That way, you're able to uh, probably just share that, that we were able to know who you are. Give us a shout out. Let us know where you're checking us out from. And we're going to go ahead and uh, get started with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you and bless your name, God. We thank you for this wonderful day you've given us. We thank you for everybody that's here with us, God, those who are checking us out online, pardon me, live in person, as well as in Zoom. And Father, we just ask that you would just have your way today, Lord God. Bless uh, this time of fellowship. Allow this word to really uh, bring enlightenment to us to understand and know what it is and who you are and what you came to do. So Father, we just thank you, God. We thank you for your love. I pray that for anybody this week, God, I pray against any spirit of distraction. Allow us to just fully focus upon you and hear what you're saying to us. Thank you. In the wonderful name of Yeshua, we bless you. Amen. Amen. All right. So with that in mind, uh, we always like to, you know, if you've never joined us before, P-Town Fresh is a unique opportunity where we connect with God. Uh, we utilize technology and we have a great time. So um, towards that end, um, we always like to start out with a question of the day. And, you know, I ask questions, you can ask questions. And our question of the day is, what's something you don't like to share? And so I'm going to go ahead and share from our Facebook audience and responses first. Um, let's see, where are they? Here we go. Again, and the question on deck is, what is something that you don't like to share? So we have uh, Nick the zombie said, uh, my partner's spouse. Sinead McCoy said, my feelings. Andrea McGuire said, my first thought, my children. Okay. And Precious Moore said, my favorite snacks and snow crab legs. And I was thinking the same thing, honey. Uh, when you mentioned the snow crab legs, I, I was, I thought about saying the same thing because, you know, uh, I just don't like to share my snow crab legs. And, you know, and I, I really liked it back in the day when our children didn't like crab legs. But, you know, that day has changed a little bit. And I do have one little story, something else that I'll say that I don't like to share or didn't like to share. One was my scooter. Okay. And so many of you probably have not never heard this story, but I must confess that I was a dropout. Um, what? I quit school. What year? Uh, many years ago. Yeah, fourth grade. So when I was in kindergarten, <laughs> <laughs> we had recess, and this is back in the day, and we used to have these little small black scooters, and so you know everybody was scooting around on the little wow. scooters, and we had we only had a few of them. You didn't have them for everyone. And so we had to share. Now, this, of course, was back in the day when we had recess. I don't know if y'all still have that today, but recess was like the favorite time of the school day. And so it was time for me to share the scooter with somebody else and for them to get on. But instead of sharing, uh, I didn't want to share. And I said, I quit school. <laughs> and I walked away and walked home. For real? And he let you do that? It's like back, it's back in the day. this was back in the day. <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't remember what happened after that, but I ended up you know somehow finishing the school year. So maybe I ended up returning. Golly. After that butt whooping. <laughs> so yeah, what you doing, home? What you? I quit, mom. I'm from Chris school. All right. So, all right. Uh, anyone else? I don't like sharing my water. Yeah. All right, you said what, Keontae? I don't like sharing my water. You don't like sharing your water? No. Okay. All right, good. And can somebody cut the lights off in the back, please, the back wall? Faith? So, Ooh. I just remembered something. Do, 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 do. So Go ahead. you tell us to share, <laughs> and you tell us to go to school, but you said you quit school, and you didn't get nothing? <laughs> you said what? This is a good situation of... Do as I say, not as I do. This was a long time ago, Faith. Yeah, but uh, it's 2022 now. Just because it was a long time ago doesn't mean you can't get a woman. 
Well, I can't get a whooping now. I'm, I, I, I'm sure I received whatever punishment I was supposed he, to he made up for receive back then. Back to school, like two or three more times. All right. So. I have one. All right, Shana. I don't like sharing anything with my father. No food, Why? no desserts, Why? no drinks, Why? nothing. Wow. What's wrong nothing. with sharing food with your dad? Okay. He's like a, a third of it. <laughs> so. Everything. Like he drinks half, eats half. No. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. So today we're going to be studying uh, in First John chapter four. All right, so we ask everybody to make sure you turn in your Bibles to First John chapter four. All right, and I want us to keep that response in mind as to those things that we don't like to share. All right, and so for context, we're going to begin in verse seven this week. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Amen? Amen. All right. So let's check this out here. Just put them outside. All right. So last time we talked about the question, what is love? Okay. And so we also discussed two prerequisites to demonstrate true love. Okay. And those prerequisites were what? Being born of God and what? Anybody remember? Knowing God. Knowing God. Amen. Now, so today we're going to begin in verse 9. So let's check this out. He said 1 John what? I'm sorry. 1 John 4, 9 through 11. All right. So, in this, the love of God was manifested toward us. That God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through. All right. So that's from where? First John chapter four, verse nine. Now, let's talk about this. The first thing that we see here is manifested. Okay. So he says, in this, the love of God was what? Manifested towards us okay so this word manifested comes from the greek word phaneru which means to make manifest or visible all right or known what has been hidden all right now in other words it means to make actual and visible all right to make realized so the first thing I want us to understand about this manifest is that God made his love unmistakably clear. That's what that word manifest means. All right. To make it actual and visible so everybody can see. It. All right. And so he made his love so clear that even Stevie Wonder could see it. <laughs> Is everybody understanding this? Yeah. Now, listen to this. So, again, listen to this. In this, the love of God was what? Manifested toward us. That God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Now, here's a question to start out with. How does this action communicate God's love to us? How does that action? It says, in this the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through. I mean, mm -hmm. on the surface, it's just like he gave his only child for the rest of the world who want 
give up the whole person who can carry your legacy and your name for, for people who, who don't probably even don't even know you how you want them to know you. That's, that's that speaks itself, but it's always deeper. But looking at it from face value, that's what you see for. Okay, good. Amen. Anyone else? What else does that mean to you? So pretty much piggybacking off what Rashida said. Um, again, just your your only child, you sending him so that you know people who, for one, probably don't even know you, and you know the ones that know of you and choose not to do what you say do, you still giving them a chance through your own flesh and blood to be able to, you know, have love and um, that you, it says that we might live through him, that we might live through Jesus. That's just right there, like we um, referring back to last week about love, unconditional love, what love is. That right there is nothing but love. Amen. Yeah. That's good. That's good. All right. So, what I want us to do is I want to give us a, give you an example, okay? And this is something that we may not have considered. And I was just, you know, thinking about this. Think about the draft. Anybody know anybody that's been to war before? Now, in recent times, they didn't have a draft. But back in the day, they did have a draft. Now, think about how during draft time, we had to send away our sons to fight in the wars. Now, however, you could get a pass if you were the only surviving son and your other brothers had been killed in war. Think about think about that for a moment. So we, you know, draft time normal, you know, everybody fills out, you know, every a young man over 18 has to fill out when you turn 18, you have to fill out your selective service card. Right. And which means that you're now registering for the draft, that means that they can call you. And so, but in this case, the only way they could get a pass was if they had what? A surviving son. And not just the only son, because if, if, even if you had an only son, you didn't get a pass, but if you had a surviving son, that means all the other ones died. So I want you to think about this. He gave his only son. So it's one thing to give if you got more. Yeah, okay. three of them. You know, I got you know what I got six sons. So here, this one I don't really like anyway. So yeah, <laughs> right. I I, I really I, I kind of doubt if this one you know he has my last name, but I'm kind of <laughs> unsure some things. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He don't look that like me. He don't look that like me. He got my ears. That's it. All right. I got my doubts. So watch this. So that's one if you got extra. It's another to give if it's your last. Right. You're like, nobody loves, you know, think about it. You got that last drop of Kool Aid. Nobody wants anybody to take their last drop of Kool Aid, right? Hold on, Faith. So. And especially if you've already enjoyed the rest of the Kool-Aid. That last little bit of Kool-Aid. I mean, and you... It was a good bath. It was good. You know what I'm saying? You want to hold... I was, I was looking forward to that. Right, right, right. Who ate the last pork chop? <laughs> right? The last bite of sandwich. Exactly. The last so, sale. but watch this. It's a whole nother thing to give your only. Right. If that's all you have. Is, is that beginning to make sense to some people? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this word, and he says his what? His only begotten son. Yeah. And the King James uses the Greek word monogenes. Okay, or monogenes, which you hear in that what? Mono, which is? Singular. One. Yeah. And gene, G-E-N-E, -E, which means? Like as far as like we have genetics, right? Genesis, all of those things. So, which means again, the single of its kind. 
I want you to think, wow, Holy Spirit. I want you to think about we get so involved. There's some people that get so involved and not not discounting the cause, but over like endangered animals, endangered species. Why? Because it's the last of its kind. It can't reproduce anymore. You know, that last rare bald eagle or 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 white rhinoceros with the yellow tail or whatever the case is. You know, but that is the last one in his existence and it can't reproduce anymore. And we try to do everything to do what? To save that. But yet he willingly gave his only. Does that make is, is it beginning to sink in a little bit? And so we also are very familiar with the passage which we referenced last week. When, when uh, Yeshua was talking to Nicodemus, he said what? God gave what? His only begotten son. So we were familiar with that. And then also what I want you to see is that in sending him into the world, he didn't send him out on a selfish conquest mission. I'm going to send you out so you can go get more territory for me and make me rich. That's not what he sent him out for. He actually sent him on a suicide mission. Very if we were to call it to death. Very much so. Yeah. Are, are y'all understanding? Rashida, go ahead. Doesn't that kind of also show the love that Jesus had for his father? Because mm-hmm. he didn't know what he was going to go through. He just knew that he had to go through it. Mm-hmm. So blindly, he followed those instructions not knowing what was going to happen to him. Amen. Well... Here, here's the thing. I would say I wouldn't say blindly, because you know he was familiar with scripture. He knew what that he knew that it was prophesied. He knew what would happen, and he said himself, you know, the Son of Man, you know, nobody takes but that I lay my life down. So he knew what was going on, but he was obedient and did demonstrate love for his father, and that he obeyed. Amen. And so, so that's a very good point. And because one of the things is in sending him on this suicide mission, he essentially sent him on the front lines, fully knowing the outcome, fully knowing what would happen. Wow. So this is making sense to some people a little bit. All right, so let's continue on a little bit here. In this, the love of God was manifested. Yes, Faith? Uh, Excuse me, I'm having trouble with this. Okay, somebody can... All right. So, watch this. Again, in this, the love of God was what? Manifested toward us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. So another word I want us to take a look at is he says that we might what? Live through him. Let's see what this means. This word live is the Greek word zao, spelled Z-A-O. And so as what this word means is to live, to breathe, to be among the living, to enjoy real life. DJ, can you just put them in a kennel outside on the side of the house? He's on one today. So, but to enjoy real life. And when I hear that, it almost reminds me of Pinocchio. Exactly. I'm a a real boy. Right? Because he lived his life as a puppet or whatever he was. And until he was what? And then he became alive. And now he's able to live like everyone else. And so, as we're looking at this, what we see 
is that it said that he did what? He gave his only begotten son that we might what? Live through him. So he would be the path for our life. So we might truly live. So what were we doing before? Just existing. Or we were walking dead. Mm. Like that show that some of y'all like to watch. That reminds me of the first song, Zombie. They walk around like a zombie to God found me. Exactly. And can we, um, we got to do something with the lighting out there. And I think it's more of the way this is angled. If somebody could just do a little angle on that. And cut out that light up there too. It might help it. All right. It's a little bit better. There we go. That's better. All right. Perfect. So, now as we're looking at this. Let's talk about this. Let's unpack this. So I want you to turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. Okay, let's check this out. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Wow. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Again, this is Paul's letter to the Ephesians. And he says again, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles. That's what everybody else was doing in the futility of their mind. What's futility? Uselessness. Uselessness. The resist is futile. All right. And so having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. They think they might understand something, but in reality, they walk in the night with shades on. Right. I hate when people do that. They, they can't see. Are, are, is, is this making sense? And then watch this. It says being alienated from what? The life of God. They're missing it. Why? Because they're being, they're ignorant because of the blindness of their heart. And as a result, they're giving themselves over to whatever they want to do. Wow. That's what our condition was. And the condition of those who have not submitted their life to Yeshua. Would y'all agree? So, thoughts, questions, comments, response before I continue. I'm about to say, hold on, I don't know if the message ain't over. <laughs> you started asking about that, John. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We good? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I want you to remember that the reason he came is that we might have what? Life. I want you to turn in your Bibles to John chapter 10. Yeah, we're going to be going to we're going to be going a couple of places today. What did you say? What did you say? John chapter 10. We're going to be reading a couple of verses today. We got a couple of references. John 10. Look, don't get mad because I'm giving you a lot of receipts. All right, because guess what? Somebody might want a refund. And if, and if they need a refund, they want a refund, what do they need to do? Check what? Check the receipts. Some of y'all will get that on the way home. Stop by the stove. 
All right, so here we go. Now, most assuredly, I say to you, the first one. beginning in verse one. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up another way, the same as a thief and a robber. Real simple in point, right? If somebody come, if anybody is a guest of my home, they're going to come through what? The, door. the front door. But if I see him knocking on the window like brother man for the fifth floor, right, right, right. Right. then you, you don't belong here. From the fifth floor. From the, from the fifth floor. You better go back up to the fifth floor. I going to come down, brother. And, and, and you better come down by the front door. And if I deny you, then oh well. Everybody understand? Yeah. But watch this. He says, so, but climbs up another way, the same as a thief and a robber. We get that. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Yeah. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Mm -hmm. They recognize his voice. He identifies and knows them. A good shepherd knows each of his sheep. Watch this. It's almost like, have you ever seen somebody and they got a couple of dogs or whatever the case is, and, and, and to you, they're all the same. But to them, they know each one of them individually. They know each of their preferences, each of their mannerisms, e each of their characteristics. Yeah. And I want us to understand that that's how intimately he knows us. He knows his sheep. He goes, watch this, and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yeah. Yet they, they will by no means follow a stranger but will flee from him. For they don't know the voice of strangers. They, they're taught, just like little kids, stranger danger. Yeshua used this illustration, but they didn't understand the things which he spoke to them. So he said, said it to them, but they didn't get it. So then John proceeds to break it down a little bit more. He, he, he shares the narrative a little more. He says, then Yeshua said to them again, most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers. So if you didn't come by me, you were just another person that was about to be a victim of ADT Vivint or Nine millimeter. <laughs> and everybody understand? But the sheep did not hear them. Because the sheep have an ability to recognize. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And will go in and in and out and find pasture. He'll be able to come in. Go out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to what? Destroy. Destroy. But he says, I have come mm -hmm. that they may have what? Life. And that they may have it more abundantly. More abundantly. If you're reading in your digital Bible, and I don't often say this, or if you have a physical Bible, I want you to highlight the word abundantly. Because we're going to unpack that word today. We've heard that word many times, right? Yes, sir. Okay. We're going to break that down. And I'm going to continue on for a second. But I want you to just, we're going to come back to abundantly. I'm the good shepherd. Not the bad shepherd. Right, right. But the good shepherd. The good shepherd will give his life for the sheep. Wow. Not only will he rescue them, but he will even give his own life and risk his own life to rescue the sheep. 
See, a good shepherd won't just say, wolf! <laughs> a good shepherd be like, all right, what's up? You ain't going to get me. Look, you might get him, but you're going to have to come through me first. Even if I lay my life down, you ain't going to get a free meal. Yeah. It's going to cost you something. Yeah, yeah. That's the mark of a good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep, but a hireling who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, a contractor, a temporary employee. Mm -hmm. See, he's just there for a what? The check. He don't care about the sheep. See, here's the difference. The contractor, the, the temp agent, oh, that's falling down over there. Hey, look, you see that? That's that's kind of crazy. Hey, look, TikTok, y'all see that right there? That's crazy. I'm, I'm on my job. That thing falling right there. It's going to fall on somebody's head. Y'all pay me enough. You know it right on the head. Right? <laughs> you, 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 you see what I'm saying? But the owner. They, they rushing. They, they, they rushing. Yeah. They like, hold up. I see something right there. Hold up. That, that right there. That don't look like that's going to pass inspection. Some, somebody, we need to grab that, help that right now because we need to help them. You see the difference? See, that shepherd has that in personal investment. He's personally invested. He has his stocks tied up in the success of the sheep. He sees the value of the sheep. Because his value is almost reflected if the sheep are all eaten up. Where's his job? Right. He invests all his time into that. Right. You, you see what I'm saying? So he says, what? But a hireling who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he's a hireling and doesn't care about the sheep. It's falling danger. I'm gone. Peace. I'm the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I'm known by my own. As the father knows me, even so I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. I got other flocks that ain't even in this timeline. Come on. <laughs> Them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself willingly. And I have the power to take it again. This command I've received from my father. Wow. So first, before I start to break some stuff down, thoughts. What are your thoughts on this passage? John? I'm reminded of um, a verse that he had in um, chapter 15 where he says, I am divine and you are the branches. Uh, he that divides in me shall go out and find it. Uh, Shall have bear, if you abide in me, you shall bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it relates to that um, that attachment, that bond, that unity, which you which you have with the Father. If I'm one with the Father and you are one with me, then we are one. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah, That's it's good. A, it's, a, it's a steady stream of power, and the, and the flow of it is like a chain of command or Amen. a hierarchy. I think you said before. Amen. That's good. Anyone else? Here's a question. How do you see, from this passage, how do you see the manifestation of Yeshua's love? From this passage? Mm -hmm. How he referred to... Jesus, that's what I'm talking about, how Jesus referred himself as the um, the door um, and pretty much can't go through it without him and that 
it used the reference of, of course, the sheep and, um, you know, how the sheep here only pay attention to their shepherd. Only their shepherd. And if we follow God and listen to God and only God, then we'll be able to, I mean, live this thing called life pretty much at the end of the day. Amen. That's a feedback off of what she was saying. <laughs> the simple fact that he's like, yeah, I got my sheep that and they know my voice and I got to make sure they straight. But I got others that aren't here on my in my in my territory yet either. And I gotta go, I gotta make sure they straight too. Like mm. I gotta I gotta, get, I gotta go get my my folk in them over there that, that's lost. Like they don't got a good shepherd. They might have a they might have a shepherd. Amen. But they're not the good shepherd. When it says the herling flee. Right, right, right. So it might be a wolf or a bear some over there, and their shepherd then went ghost because he he attend he, he tent service. <laughs> you know Amen. This is this, 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 this my full time yeah. gig. I live this. I'm 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 true to this, not new to this. Right. <laughs> so I gotta go make sure I get my folks straight over there too. So just the fact that like he 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 loves everybody the same way and, and cares about them the same way, and like just us like especially like Christians in general, we say we have to be like Christ. Like this is a prime example. Like he ain't, he ain't say with a black sheep, a white sheep, a yellow sheep, a dirty sheep, mm. uh, mm. a starving sheep. You know what I'm saying? He just said, in general, I got to go get them sheep. Amen. As they are. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a good example for how we should be living. Amen. Keith, from Rashida, Keith. Um, just looking at the fact of how just one, the simple, where it said, you know, the sheep know his voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. So to me, that, that meant that, you know, that takes time. You have to build that bond with them and mm -hmm. build that relationship. That's good. Plus, yeah. Not only him with the sheep, but the sheep with him too. So it's like it takes two. You have to be open to and willing to let that person in and trust them. So like it shows a level of trust within their relationship. Amen. That's good. I like that. Mm -hmm. Keith, were you going to say something? You had your hand up. Yeah, I don't know if it's kind of qualified, but I feel like it kind of comes back to your, your sermon from last, like what is love, like because he was willing to. We see here in the past that he wanted to lay his life down for the sheep. And then it kind of come back to this, this yep. great movie that me and you was checking out. And the dude, a dude jumps on a, a, a grenade with a team. Mm. Like, that ain't love. And, you know, this kind of same thing. Like, he wouldn't have laid his life down to, no, nah, But uh, he wouldn't have laid his life down for the sheep. So it's like, that, it's taking the L. Like, that's the ultimate form of love. And I think it's like, come back to, like, I think it's in John 2, where he's like, lay your life down for a brother. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. it all comes back to, but I had a question too. Um, can can we say we can spread that love to even the Gentiles too? That's 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 the, those are the other sheep. So, mm -hmm. cause like, so we can say like you you making a commitment to come back to Portsmouth. Like we could, we want to say all the Portsmouth the Gentile, but it's a it's a it's not a good community. Some part. So can we say that's like the same thing? Well, I want you to hold off on that until the end, and we'll come back to that. All right, so let's continue on for a moment. So watch this. Now we're going to come back to that word which I mentioned, which was what? Abundantly. abundantly. So in the Greek, the word abundantly is the word perissos, which means exceeding some number or measure or rank or need, over and above, okay? And so then... And that comes from another word, perissos, okay, which again is abundant advantage. But let's give you the definition of this word in action. All right? I want to see this word in action. Let's see it. Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. Let's go. So I want you to turn in the book of John. Mm -hmm. Turn over. Uh, let's see. We were just in 10. So we're going to turn back a couple chapters to John chapter 6. Beginning in verse 1. And this, this may not have ever been explained to you this way. So you may want to take a couple notes on this. Because we're going to break some stuff down. Because first off. Well now we're just going to jump into it. Alright. So after these things Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee. Which is the Sea of Tiberias. 
Then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Okay? So now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. So at this point, we got the crowd following Yeshua. Now this is a large crowd. This is like concert level crowd. See, we got our little P-Town Fresh. Some of y'all might say this is a crowd. This is an intimate gathering. <laughs> but that was a crowd. And so... Exactly. They had a big festival. So watch this. So Philip answered him and said, 200 den denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have just a little bit. Even with that, that's only enough for you said, a little you said bit. 200 what? Denarii. Denarii. Did they ever get denarii from? Oh. Ooh. Possibly. Possibly, I don't know. $200 worth so, of bread. Some, and, uh, some of the research, there you go. Mm -hmm. So watch this. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, Hey, look, it's a little homie over there who has five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? Mm -hmm. So he got, this is a little kid, he brought some lunch. Mm -hmm. And he has five small barley loaves. And two small fish. He got some lunch. That man, that man, got, that man got five little Debbie cakes <laughs> and two packs of tuna. Like, and, and it's a shame. This, this, imagine being a boy. Yeah, you just out here, it's hot outside. Like, yo, you <laughs> plotting on my. It's hot outside. Like, I can't wait to eat my lunch. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, Buck. Let me, let me holler at you, let me holler at you real quick. Hey, come, come holler at me real quick, little man. Hey, Drew, man, don't do that. <laughs> Hey, you hungry? <laughs> hey, I'm hungry too. You trying to share? What's up? Me and my boys right here, about five of us. Joke home, bro. <laughs> <laughs> give me that fish. Nobody, my, my grandma gave me that fish. <laughs> I'm so. <laughs> Debo <laughs> his lunch. For, for Jesus though. For Jesus though. Debo for Jesus. <laughs> Look, now don't y'all go out there and get any ideas. <laughs> give me this. You know what? <laughs> go ahead. Give me the, yeah, give yeah. me this uh Mercedes Benz. Yeah, yeah. God gonna give me a whole fleet of them. <laughs> We're gonna multiply this joint. <laughs> you can be a car lot. Y'all y'all seeing this thing? But I, I need you to see. But I mean it's crazy because the kid could have just thought like he, in his mind, he was like, yo, I'm good today. Right. I got some food. Usually my they going to be hungry. Yeah. But he, he, he was good. But watch yeah. this. And so then G, Yeshua said, make the people sit down. Sit them down. Now, there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. That was the men alone. Yeah, ain't talking about women and So, you know it was kids because you got a young boy there. Yeah. So, who, who's to say how many it was actually there? Maybe. Anywhere from six to 8,000. But watch this. And Yeshua took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them into the disciples. And the disciples to those who were sitting down. So he took it, he broke it, gave it to... The disciples. And then they did what? Handed out to the people. Handed out to the people. people. I want you to see the process here. Mm. The disciples could have tried to be selfish in receiving. Mm -hmm. They could have been like, oh yeah, more for me. You'll put some of that aside. Judas may have did that too. Go, go key. You know? But... <laughs> The whole point of it was that they could be a conduit. Yeah. They could be an avenue for the blessing to pass through. Yeah. Going back to what John said about the branch. 
You know what I'm saying? We just we just expensive of him. Exactly. See, the thing is, we got to remember our role. See, some of us act like we're supposed to be the ones on the lawn, and we're the ones that are really supposed to be serving others. Because the problem is, if you eat, see, God had a whole plan. Because, watch this, the disciples could have been passing stuff out and thinking like, hold up, we only got so much left. Right. Hold up, you know what? I'm going to put a little bit right here for me. But they had to be obedient, even to give. And so, watch this. And the disciples, those sitting down, and likewise of the fish, as much as they wanted. Anybody want some extras? We got some more. We got some more coming around. We got some more coming around. And then watch this. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. We, want, we, we want, don't want to waste any leftovers. Therefore, they gathered them up and filled how many baskets? Twelve, Twelve. Twelve baskets. I need you to see this. They that filled math ain't math in there. Twelve <laughs> baskets. Yeah. Yeah. And just so you don't get it twisted, with the fragments of what? The five barley loaves. The five barley loaves. So you got, so let, let, let's think about that. Let, let's do the math. You got a basket. You got a loaf. Basket. Loaf. Physically. See, I understand some things called matter. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Yes, sir. And, 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 and when it takes up space, it has space called a volume. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you, you have this one barley loaf. Mm -hmm. And the boy had how many of them? Five. Five, five barley loaves. Mm -hmm. It's five. Which probably wasn't enough to even fill one basket. Mm -hmm. right, right. But now you have... 12 <laughs> full baskets mm -hmm. left over. Yeah. Hey, Jesus was yeah. the first X-Men. So right now, yeah. all the all the potential physics majors were done. They gave up. It was like, I don't want to do physics anymore. No. I'm out. I'm out. He had that, he had that uh, matter manipulation. That was what you called a new math. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That new math. <laughs> Five plus two equals seven, and seven is equal to twelve. Uh, uh, right, right, right. Divide by twelve. It's like it's Look, like it's like five, five plus you, two. You know what? I just seven x. I got an idea. <laughs> I got an idea, an idea for me. Okay. A math problem. Oh, uh, I'll turn it into a math problem, little Johnny. The what's the answer? answer? The answer gonna be Jesus. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Lil Johnny had five loaves <laughs> and two fish. And two fish. No, it was he five, gave away it was, he five loaves and two fish. Five thousand, eight thousand people. Ate. At the end, how many did Lil Johnny? Have? Eight thousand people ate the five uh, loaves and two fish. Eighty-four thousand. And how much they had left over? No, you have to put in there. There was twelve barrels left. Right after um, after they finished after eating, though. Ate. Right, right. No. Lil Johnny. <laughs> What's what is X? How big was the load? It's all for X and uh, Y. John Black. <laughs> yeah, little John. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the thing is, it it, it 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 puts us back to the conversation that he had with Nicodemus because it defies all of the logic that a person that would we. naturally right. conceive out of their own physical state of being, Amen. which is again the the essence of physics but to be spiritually discerned is one thing but when you actually see it again it causes you to come out of your which is what his whole idea was to get them out of their natural way of seeing things to perceive the things that are of the spirit like he did for his disciples exclusively at first the 12 disciples until you know you know he had he had performed enough miracles and spoken in enough parables to get them to be able to receive these things because they're 
their eyes and their ears. They were dull. They wouldn't res- they, even though they see, it was hard for them to believe. I bet it was during that during this too. Like imagine you breaking off the bread and then just magically just- still being. Yeah, you know I'm saying it's just like here go your piece. Wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you still pass it up. You still have to my arms get getting tired. Like, like yo, you like, break it off the of, of bread. <laughs> you look at it, it's regenerating. Like okay, cool. We're gonna, we're gonna keep pushing. Uh, that's, that's like, 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 all right, here's a bread for you. Here's a bread for you. Here's a bread for you. Yo, how much bread do you got left? Oh, I still got five. Right. After this life change, after that experience, like come on. I'm gonna say, Come on. No bullshit. Come on. But see, yeah, you would be no bro. But see, watch this. That's bro. what we have to do. We have to avail ourselves yes. and whatever we have to allow it to be. I, once ago, years ago, I preached a message called "Little in the Master's Hand," and we have to realize that that's all it took was just a little bit. And that's all we have to do is just place whatever we have in his hand and watch what happens. Jesus. Now, watch this. And then it says, then those men, when they had seen the sign that Yeshua did, said, this is truly the prophet who's to come into the world. Now, I want you to see the object lesson here. Okay. Because what was our word of the day, boys and girls? Abundance. Abundance. The word of the day is abundance. Mm-hmm. All right. Now. Watch this object lesson. We can have, you can have your lunch. Mm -hmm. Like that little boy. Mm -hmm. Your comfortable, familiar life. Which is what you planned on. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, swallow your lunch. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that it was the seed for so many. I'm going to say that again. You can have your lunch. So this, the lunch represents the norm. Okay? Your comfortable, familiar life. And you can go about that path and consume it, whatever you want for you, and ultimately swallow that lunch, but not knowing that it's a seed. Remember, he said that a seed must first die of itself in order to what? To multiply. He said a a, a grain of wheat Mm -hmm. has to first die in order to bring forth life. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to understand something. That we can only have abundant life through Yeshua. Why do I say that? The word that he used for bringing up in the Greek. The word that he used for. Uh, picking up the fragments, the the fragments that remain was abundance. Here you see abundance personified. You see what abundance means. So it's no longer just a word with a simple definition. We have a whole story to attach to it. Now, you can either eat your seed, because that boy had a choice. He could have ate his lunch and said, y'all ain't getting nothing. Mm-hmm. Sure. And we wouldn't even have this lesson to this day. And so many would have been robbed of that lesson. But because the young man was willing to share, mm-hmm. so many others were filled. So that means you're sharing your, your credit? Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> but what you we can, know. Or <laughs> we can obey God in faith. Uh-huh. And trust him for his abund- abundance to help others. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, now, if you talk to other people in different circles, when they talk about abundance, you know, God wants you to have life and have it more abundantly and to have the abundant life. And he, they're probably talking about, you know what? God doesn't want you living in an apartment anymore, brother. He wants you to stretch out on some land of your own. He wants you to be able to have your own mortgage so you can go and go, come and go as you please. Mm-hmm. Right? You, you, you see what I'm saying? God doesn't want you just pushing a bike. God wants you to give you a fleet of cars and vehicles. And that's what people think when they think of abundance. 
That's true. That's true. That's true. But here we saw what abundance was. And I want to point out to you that it's not a thing of money or possessions like some teach. Because it's not about the quantity of things. Watch this, y'all. It's about the quality of our life in expanding the kingdom of God by discipling others. That's what it's about. That's the abundant life. Brings a different perspective, doesn't it? When do you see here selfish motives? Where do you see here consumed upon self? That's right. And watch this. What would they do with those leftovers? Taking to feed some more people. So here's my question for you. Which do you choose? Your simple everyday life or the abundant life? All right. And we we about we we close and we bringing it to a close. Yes, sir. Oh, question. Yeah. Mordecai. Uh, does that mean you share a scooter with me? Share what? Share scooter. Nope. <laughs> no scooter, no crab legs. Nope. God's still working on me. All right, so, but watch this. Let's go back to 1 John 4. Is is this helping anyone? No doubt. Yeah. So let's go back to 1 John 4 and 10. And this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Real quick, what's this verse mean to you? Right here. Um, just like hearing that, it's just like he's he uh, he just sent he sent his son, a person who has no fault at this point, to take away our accountability for our own actions. Say that one more time, Rashida. He sent his son, who at this point has no fault of his own, to take on our sins and take away our accountability for our own actions. Amen. Okay. Anyone else? Um, pretty much saying that um, herein is love. Pretty much saying, hey, this is what love is. Like, God, you know, sent his son down for us to, for, to die for our sins. And pretty much, and, and it says, not that we loved God. Like, he sent his son down for the ones that don't even love him. Mm-hmm. For all, actually. But the ones who do and the ones that say they, he do. Come they on. Do, and then the ones that don't. So he, that right there, God, this is pretty much telling you this is what the word love means. This is unconditional love. This is the definition of what love is. God doing that. Mm-hmm. Amen. Like Watch. Come on. He's so concerned about us, and we're not even concerned about him. I don't, I don't even care what you do, God. If you don't got to love me or not, I'm doing this because I'm showing you I love you. It doesn't matter if it's in return. This is what I want to do for you. Amen. Mordecai. He's basically saying that sharing is not also caring. It's it's loving, and how God loved you to the point where He died. For us, and he's going to die for us in any case. Like, you know, because he died, like, he's basically the good shepherd. Amen. Because he protects us throughout, no matter what the cost is, protects us. That's Amen. real love. And we should do the same for other people. Amen. Excellent. So, yes. And watch this. As we continue on, mm-hmm. great job. Propitiation. That word, now that's not a word that we use every day. Like, what what does that mean, right? That sounds like a word, SAT word. (laughs) Propitiation. Propitiation means to appease, to regain favor. So it's like something that you do to get back in the good graces of. 
So now, with that understanding, we're going to take a look at uh, another passage, Romans 5. And it may be a familiar passage of scripture, but I'm going to read a little bit more of it for context. Beginning in verse one, 6, excuse me, of Romans 5. Mm -hmm. For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us. And that while we were yet still sinners, mm -hmm. Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ to whom we have now received the reconciliation. Therefore, just as through, as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, that one man was who? Adam. Adam. And thus death spread to all men, because all sin, and fallen short of the glory of God. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Meaning that if there is no law, you can't be declared guilty. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned, according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who was a type of him who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by the one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Yeshua HaMashiach, abounded to many, or Jesus Christ, as you may read. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abound, grace abounded much more. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Can you see his love demonstrated out? What he basically did was wrote his love on the board for everyone to read. The board happened to be the timeline. Of our lives. Wow. That's serious, isn't it? God demonstrated his own love, and again, that what? While we were yet still sinners. So remember, we go back to that verse 10 of 1 John and 4. And this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. Translation, you could put in parentheses, while we were what? Still sinners. He died for us. And remember, I used to share this, if you've never heard this illustration, if you, uh, you know, if you saw somebody on the street getting beat up, you know, would you jump in? And first of all, what if it was your grandmother? Would you jump in? You say, sorry, getting beat up and robbed? Yes, I would. Okay. What if it was a, a classmate from school? Uh, maybe. Maybe. No. What if it was your enemy? Your more, the, the one that picked on you all every day? I'd jump in. You say what? Call the police. 
But I stopped the fight. But one of the things we got to realize is that listen up. God's answer is it didn't matter who it was. Right. He would jump in because that's what he did. And that's why it says very rarely will a right, you know, with somebody you're the life, maybe for a righteous man. But this is the love, the type of love he had for us, that while we were still sinners, he died for us. And so as we get ready to close very quickly, what does that mean to you? Just this part at the end reminds me of a movie uh, I told Keith about uh, Seven Pounds with Will Smith. Mm -hmm. And where he'll basically, it's a great movie. And mm -hmm. like he, he basically just like, he, I don't know what for you. But he, he, you know what I'm saying? He, give, right. he gives to the people and like he puts them, he puts them through tests mm -hmm. to see, no, this, to part, see, right? to see if they're, if they're worth him doing what he's going to do for them. And at the end of the movie, he, 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 he gives his heart. Mm -hmm. And like it's, Lady, the lady that he that received is like in shock and all because she just she didn't even know like who this guy was or what he was doing or why he even would think about doing it for her because she's just some regular person on the street not on the street but you know what I'm saying just some mm -hmm. regular person and it just goes to show like like God really loved us that much that we would, we would, quite literally every time we sin we're just spitting in his face Amen. And he's still willing to just I love you mm. it's crazy that's real. John, are you gonna say something? I was reminded of um, <clears throat> the Pharisee and the publican when they both went to pray because it reflects, you know, he always has said, you know, except your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees because they were contradictory. You know, they would say one thing and they was doing something else, but to be honest and, and how many times he had uh, put it in, in the form of uh, the one scripture where he laid it down where he came not to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they claimed that they could see, but in fact, they couldn't. And because they said that they could see, he couldn't heal them. You know, it's, it's like, you know, they that are whole need not a physician. But we realized through that analogy of the publican and the, the Pharisee that it's nothing that we can do of ourselves to earn salvation. It's not something that's given by merit, but Ephesians 2 and 8 says, uh, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And having a humbleness to be able to admit that, to open up to God about the things that he already knows about. Amen. That he is already accepted, but for us to accept his acceptance. And the, 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 the bridge. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Yes, sir. So, here's a question then. What does that look like in our everyday life I think it's just like every you know making the right choices and decisions every day like he gave us free will for a reason and I think part of that is because like when you choose to do right by him and do what he, you know, he wants you to do then he knows that it's genuine so we know what's right and wrong we feel it in our, in our, in our heart what, what choice we decide to make is right or wrong for us right. so yeah. every choice that we make um Every day, it's, it's either choosing to honor God and the death of Jesus, or to choose flesh. Right. Amen. And to read, to finish up, and to close out, the last verse, First John four and eleven. Again, beloved, if God so loved us, so also, pardon me, we also ought to love one another. Wow. After that, it's one thing to read that. But it's another thing to read it after that level of understanding that we just grasped. Wow. That's asking a lot, isn't it? It is easier said than done. And so that's one of the things that we have to strive to do is to love one another, but not just love one another and be like, oh, I love you, you love me. No, 
We got to go deeper than that. This is more than just a song. This is more than just, hey, this is a deep beneath the surface love. And that's the same love that we're to demonstrate and model towards others. Because remember, we're to be vessels of that love. So shall men know that you are my what? That you have what? Amen. And sometimes we even have to love them first. So today's message, the title was shared love. So thoughts, questions, comments, response. for us if we're honest that's what we're called to do that was the rubric of what of how we're being measured that was the standard now you see what kind of grade you want to get <laughs> you get in where you fit in it's up to you amen, amen. all right well I enjoy today's message. Let's get ready to go ahead and pray out. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you and bless your name. We give you glory and honor just for your word today, just for your understanding of your love. We thank you that you've shared your love with us such that we can share it with others, God. We thank you for the many examples you've given us today of your love and, and the abundant life that you want us to have. Help us to redefine our understanding of what it means to have abundant life. Not in terms of us, but in terms of how it blesses and helps others. Let us all strive for that level and standard of love. That it's not common love, not just love that just rolls off our tongue. But it's love that is evidenced by the tears and the sweat from our brow. We thank you. And Father, we thank you that we have the ability to experience the love because of the gift you gave. Help us to walk upright and to walk worthy. To be examples, to reflect and resemble your love throughout the world. That others might see us and in seeing us in our actions, they'll be reminded and they'll be able to hear your voice through our actions. That we might be able to preach the greatest sermons in the earth by loving one another. We thank you and give you glory. In the wonderful name of Yeshua, we bless you. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you all so much. Zoom, y'all were kind of quiet today. Y'all still with us, Zoom? Yeah, I'm still here. I was like, what can you set it up? 
Amen. Yeah, we still here. Amen. Awesome. Well, we love y'all. Hope y'all have a blessed and victorious day. And uh, please remember to walk out and share this banner of love that God's given us to others. And um, Lord willing, we'll see you on Wednesday for uh, P-Town Fresh Prayer, 6 in the morning. We'll see you, but you'll probably hear me. And then, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then back again on next Sunday, Lord willing. All right. Love y'all. Be blessed. Amen. Love you,